Hello and welcome to a special edition of Fayetteville in Focus. I'm Kevin Arada with the City of Fayetteville's Corporate Communications Department and with us today we have two special guests. We have Pam Salsby from FEMA and we have Essie Murphy from the Small Business Administration. So thank you ladies for joining us today. Thank you, thank Kevin. You. So they actually reached out to us to say what we want to share with us, information about FEMA, uh, information about the Small Business Associate or Administration and what they can do for residents, what they can do for small businesses. And so really, uh, the intent here is just to have a conversation about what we can help our residents with. And I do want to point out before we start that while this is a City of Fayetteville show, uh, we are also airing this on the county, uh, Cumberland County's channel. Uh, oh, great. So this really becomes something that the county residents will see as well. So it's not just City of Fayetteville. Uh, and of course, we'll have this on YouTube so anybody can see it. So this information is generally helpful for anybody affected by the hurricane. It really is, as we were just chatting with uh, each other beforehand uh, for um, what hurricane this is for. This is really for Hurricane Florence, not for Michael, correct? Yes, this is uh, our disaster and this is what we really want to talk about right now because the magnitude of this disaster was huge and the number of people impacted also huge. And so that is, is our focus and priority. So, so tell me a little bit about the things that are offered from FEMA and, and what folks can expect, uh, what type of assistance they can expect to get. All right. First of all, let me just thank you, Kevin, and the city for allowing us the time and space to have this conversation. FEMA continues to execute a very robust response to Hurricane Florence. And there are a lot of different metrics that you can use to measure the progress of the mission and the work that you're trying to accomplish. And we look at it in large measure according to how much money has actually been approved and dispersed to survivors, the people hit so hard and need help so much and also by the number of people who are actually receiving assistance. And so I just have just a quick report um, on FEMA and recovery by the numbers. Right now, as of today, about $565 million in federal funding has been approved for Hurricane Florence survivors in the state of North Carolina. And this includes $249 million in FEMA flood insurance payments, $104 million in FEMA individual assistance grants for homeowners and renters for uninsured damage and needs, and $212 million in disaster loans from the U.S. Small Business Administration, a strong FEMA partner. FEMA has dispersed aid to some 128,000 North Carolina residents affected by Hurricane Florence. And I know that these are the numbers. They're huge numbers. It shows the level of uh, support that we are giving to survivors along with our state and county partners. We're all in this thing together. And we also recognize that there are people and families, uh, men, women, children, behind the numbers. And right now, they are suffering. Uh, they have frustration, confusion, angst. Their world has been turned upside down. And so what we really want to communicate is that we are here to help and to help to make things right for the people who have suffered so much. The first thing that those who are in the impacted counties, the designated federally declared disaster counties need to do to be eligible for disaster grants from FEMA is to register. So that's thing one. And really, Kevin, that's where I wanted to start. There are many ways for a survivor to apply for disaster aid. And the first thing Thing that they can do is go online. We have a website, uh, disasterassistance.gov. Uh, we also have a phone line that folks can call, and that number is there graphically on your screen right now. That's 800-621-3362, 800-621, that translates to FEMA. And they can also visit a disaster recovery center in person. And the closest one to where we are right now is in Cumberland County, the Social Services uh, to build, building. It's on Ramsey Street, and that dis disaster recovery center is open from nine to seven, Monday through Saturday. It is staffed by men and women who are tested and trained in bringing people on back to the other side of a disaster. So they will walk you through that process every step of the way. If it's a quick question, a quick check on a registration, that can happen in a matter of minutes. If it's something that's long and time consuming, nobody has a quota of, I gotta see 10 people today. They will right. take as long as necessary um, to help a survivor understand the registration process. So inside these disaster recovery centers, it's like a one-stop mm -hmm. shopping place, if you will, 
for services and uh, our big partner, um, SBA has a, a huge presence in the centers. So does the state and local uh, resource officers and, um, and a lot of the, the charities and nonprofits also um, make st stops to some of the disaster recovery centers. And that's where I want to bring in Essie, who can talk about the presence that the Small Business Administration has inside the disaster recovery centers and involved in every step of the way with survivors and getting them to the other side. So before we switch over to you, Essie, that's a, a great uh, intro in, in terms of where people go and what they do. And I know yeah. a lot of people probably like that face-to-face -face piece instead of doing it online, yes. especially when they have questions. Uh -huh. So when did you all get here and set the disaster recovery units up and when do you anticipate leaving so that people have an idea of how long they could expect to go over to Ramsey Street? Well, there's no, we'll be here as, as long as we're needed in the state or and in, in any facet of services. But what I do want to stress is that it's important for people to show up and register or ask mm -hmm. questions, uh, find out what's available when they don't uh, make themselves available to the staff there to, to ask questions and it, it might close. I mean, they, um, DRCs are opening, disaster recovery centers right. <laughs> are opening and closing all the time based on community need. Right. So there's no you know, need to, to think I've got to go right now, although it would be good if people were to, to, sure. to go right now, um, but there's no deadline for, okay. for when um, the DRCs will close. Okay. Well, and thanks. And, and Essie, talk a little bit about what the SBA does and how they help as well. Then. Sure. We um, offer low interest rate loans for individuals that's uninsured or uninsured. Um, we first tell them to register with FEMA. That's the first thing we tell them. We have three ways to apply as well. The first way you can go online is sba.gov, sba.gov, or you can go online. I mean, not online, rather, you can call. And that number is 800 659-2955 and also the recovery centers. We're everywhere the FEMA are. You will see the SBA signs and they can come in and get assistance for homeowners, renters. We also do small business and nonprofit organizations. So we have a different um, take on it. FEMA does the grants for the safe and sanitary. We do to make sure you are back where you were pre-disaster. Sure. So if they don't have enough with the insurance, we tell them even if you have insurance, please still apply with FEMA and then register with Small Business Administration because it's a lot of money that your insurance doesn't cover because some individuals may not have flood insurance. So they are not able to get that from their insurance. And a lot of people don't know. I ran into a lot of individuals that didn't know about the flood insurance. So they're like, well, FEMA told me no. And you guys, what do you, why I want a loan? You know, and I feel like this, um, you would need a loan if you can't afford to get back on your feet. You know, that's what we're here for. We're here to assist FEMA with whatever they don't have to give the businesses. Sure. And so that's what we do. And, and for either of you, both, both of you actually, how long does it take? So let's say you walk in on a Saturday to get something done and, and then you've got your application in for whatever you're applying for. How long does it take to, for that process to go through and then to, to come to fruition with a check to help you for whatever yeah. it might be? Well, let me back up and, and then get into that by talking about some of the, the grants and the programs and resources that FEMA offers because people will say, okay, FEMA's here, so what can you do? What do you offer? So we do home repairs, and just like Essie said, the home repairs are emergency, and so they are not... Um, designed and we are not tasked with bringing that homeowner uh, to where they were pre-disaster. We make sure the home is safe, sanitary, and functional and that folks can live in there while they're making uh, long-term plans for their housing. So we offer housing repair, uh, rental assistance, transitional sheltering, which is staying in hotels and motels at FEMA's expense while um, while a family, an individual, is working on a more long-term plan for, um, for housing. We also offer help with medical and dental expenses that were directly uh, related to the hurricane. And uh, we offer um, assistance in replacing property, personal possessions that were lost in the storm. And those are just like the big picture of the programs that we offer. And again, um, 
folks are not able to access them until they register and right. they find out. So shortly after they register, they will be contacted by an inspector who, you know, has to verify the information that the survivor gave to us on their application uh, form. So that take that comes maybe five to ten days after the registration is done and there's some things that I want to say about that Kevin because unfortunately when disasters strike they can bring out the worst in people and and sometimes um, the best and then sometimes the worst people who don't have be the best intention of helping a survivor at all in fact you know the criminal element comes into play so we want people to know that when an inspector calls to make an appointment to come back to come over and look over and inspect your property um, he or she will not ask for your registration number that's a unique number given to you and FEMA knows it uh, the, the inspector knows it, so there shouldn't be someone coming to your door saying, can you give me your registration number? I'm here to inspect your home. It's like, no, it, it, it doesn't work that way, and so the inspection should be stopped at that point. But to keep it positive, uh, the FEMA inspector who comes to your home will have a badge, uh, a photo ID badge that has FEMA on it, a uh, picture of the person. They will not have to uh, verify the registration number with you, but they, but they will want to look over your property and document um, what they saw, uh, the, extent of the, the extent of the damage, and what that homeowner, renter, um, business owner, um, perhaps, may be able to get in terms of assistance. And then shortly after that, and, and I don't want to, to make any big, um, broad statement about time, because of the magnitude of this disaster and the large numbers of people who are registering for help, it may take um, maybe a week or so for you to get the determination letter, and we're gonna talk about that just a, a little bit later, um, that explains the, the grant that you were able to receive, or if something went wrong, they may say, well, you didn't get it, and here's why, so let's go back and, and, uh, and fix uh, the application and, and try this again. Um, but it doesn't take a long time but we do ask for patience and understanding because there are so many folks who are hurting and who need assistance right sure. now. Right? Oh, absolutely. So with the Small Business Administration, we do have a timeline. It's um, two to three weeks of processing. So if you get all your documents back in on time, I mean, everything's signed, you will get approval letter within a two to three weeks of processing. And after that, depending on the amount you apply for and approve for, you'll get that first disbursement within five business days. So we do have like a process plan. So with the business loans, their lowest 2%. Well, I'll take that back. The business loans is 3.675%. The homeowners and the loans for the home renters is as low as 2%. So we have a, you know, a low rate and nonprofit organization, um, sorry, nonprofit organizations is 2.5%. And so, Depending on what they apply for, the business and the nonprofit organizations, you can receive up to $2 million in your loan, and that will determine the processing time because you'll get a disbursement. So you'll have to send in your receipts and document every work order that's done to your home, and then once you get that in, and then they'll cut another disbursement for a check. So it's like a little different from the way FEMA does it than how we handle the process. Yeah, and, and I think survivors really need to keep their options open at this time when so much is going on and so much is in flux. Um, many of the survivors are referred to the SBA when they're registering for disaster assistance. Um, they may get something in the mail or they may be told at a disaster recovery center, we need you to go over to the SBA's um, desk where they're situated and uh, apply for an, an SBA loan. And a lot of people don't want to do that. They're saying, I'm in the throes of just existing right now. You know, I can barely make it and you're talking to me about a loan and many of them say, forget it, I'm, I, I'm not interested in a loan. And that stops the whole process. Getting assistance, disaster assistance from FEMA is a process and the process works. It just takes a little time. And I really wanted Essie to speak to that because I hear it and we see it so much in our disaster recovery centers or just in, in just the knowledge of what people are saying um, online and social media and the way they respond to us in general that they don't want an, an SBA loan. And to just speak about 
why that is being offered and why it's so important to consider it. Because if you, if you don't follow through on at least filling out the application, it stops the process because it tells uh, the folks who are, are looking over the loan and, and, and deciding eligibility that you didn't follow this step. And so it must mean that you are okay. no longer, yeah, that you're okay or you, know, you don't want to continue working with FEMA. So. Well, it's great to hear, too, from, yeah, from I, what I, you're saying and, and why you all are here together, which is start with FEMA and then move through the system. But part of this is, is following directions, I guess, would be a, a better way to say it, to go, hey, follow directions. If they tell you to go do this, probably a prudent thing to do because it's going to hurt you or could hurt you. Yeah, if you don't. It just opens the door to more programs and more options if you if you go ahead and apply for the SBA loan and it doesn't mean that you have to accept it when they right. offer it and it doesn't mean that you have to accept the entire amount that they say that you're eligible for. Correct. But I just want you to people say well why should I do that? I mean I wish that you would speak to why it's so important right. uh, to consider that and, and what it opens up for you when you do. Well, the thing about it, like you said, once they apply with, re register with you all, they apply with us. And then what we do is we take everything in consideration. We take if you have insurance. We take if you don't have insurance. We take if you already have a loan from the from FEMA, you know, the registration program you go through there. So what we do is once you come to us, we just say fill it out because you never know what you're going to need. And that's what we're telling them. We're not saying that you're obligated. It doesn't even cost for you to apply. Mm -mm. So if you just go ahead and apply, it may be, you may need more. When you get the help from FEMA, your insurance, you may need $20,000 more or whatever. So you just apply once you get your approval letter. If it's over what you need, you don't have to take it. You know, turn it down, take what you need. And that's, that's what we're here for. We're to make sure you get back to pre-disaster. So and, and, and see, and that's, that's the, the big part of what the SBA does. We are we are trying to be a bridge, um, like hope and a kickstart to right. get you to the the long term recovery and long term housing that you need. Um, but it's not it's not the final step. It's just like a kickstart to bounce you there, and then from there, you know, other other entities come into play. And again, it's it's not just FEMA. And it's not just the SBA. The state has resources. The state has programs, and there's so many wonderful volunteer organizations that kick in. I, um, I saw a big uh, canvassing of, of uh, a religious um, church organization that had set up uh, big trucks and they were going door to door to homes where they needed to be, where there was mold or maybe right. they needed help, you know, getting rid of that and mucking and gutting homes right. and, and helping, you know, with windows and doors. So there's, there are a lot of us who come into play. It's a big network of assistance. Um, you know, FEBA is maybe like the big um, entity in, in the market, but there's so many others. And what I want to also express is for people not to be afraid to ask for help and, and to please just not be frustrated in the process because it is a process sure. and um, patience has to be like the, one of the rules of the day uh, moving forward. Yeah, absolutely. No, it's, it's a daunting process. It if is. you've never gone through this before, and again, to understand what they've gone through, as, as you mentioned when we started here, it's, yeah. it's a, it's a tough thing to have gone through to lose anything right? Uh, and, and, uh, and then to move forward and how do you recover from it. And Essie, you mentioned insurance before and, and you checked to whether folks have it or don't. I wanted to bring that back up from a FEMA side and, and ask, so, so if somebody says, well, I don't even have insurance, I can't go to FEMA, or I do have insurance, so I don't need to go, how does that work? Well, and what should folks know? Well, first of all, if, you've, if you're in a federally declared county, and you've been impacted by the storm, that in itself makes you eligible. So you could be a renter, you could be a homeowner um, with insurance, without insurance, or insure or underinsured. <laughs> like like all of those folks who fit that description can enter into um, the website and the application process for a to be considered for a disaster. Um, grant sure. from FEMA. So none of those things should be barriers. Um, there's a lot of information to get through. And, and like, I, like we said at the top, I just feel that folks get so much, have a much better experience getting through a disaster and trying to apply for aid when they can do so in person. 
And um, if you go to disasterassistance.gov online, and also, you know, I, I failed to mention, I said there were three ways. Either, we're so tech savvy now. You know, you can download the app on your phone. There must be an app. You right? can, there's an app for everything, so there's, a, there's an app for FEMA as well. And once you go there, you can check and see where all of the disaster recovery centers are. If you live in Fayetteville, Cumberland County, it doesn't mean that you have to go to the one that we mentioned um, at the DSS building. You can go to anyone because you've got that registration number and you can be plugged into the system and anybody there, staff, uh, like I said, trained and tested to walk you through it, they'll be able to do that. Um, so we just want to encourage folks, uh, if they've had major damage, if they've had minimal damage, uh, there could be uh, a program that fits uh, what you need and that's what we're trying to do. Uh, there was one big storm, but it impacted people in many different ways. Right. So, so there. And it's amazing, you, you say that, how different storms do affect us, because when we had Matthew a couple of years ago here, drastically different across the city of Fayetteville than, than what we had with Florence yeah. this time. And that's, and um, that's one of the things that's just so sad about the situation is that folks who were just getting over Hurricane Matthew are right. now you know, hit again with Hurricane Florence. And so they've been through this process and to have to gear up for that again, um, it takes a lot of strength. And that's, after saying that, I just have to acknowledge, you know, the spirits and, and um, the mood of some of the folks out there and just determined to get over, sure. to, uh, to get back to where they were, to get their families back to where, where they were. Um, there's nothing to, there's not enough you can say about resiliency. And when you see that in action and you see that in play, um, there's a lot of hope out there. I know there's frustration, yes. but there are, there are, there are folks who, who have just a positive attitude, like we can get through this. North Carolina has been through a lot of disasters and right. somehow always rise above it, always uh, gets through and helps each other. It's, it's people helping people. That Pretty make, much. That make this thing well, work. it is amazing the community support you mentioned too, and certainly we're we're glad that you all are both here and your agencies are here. But I remember uh, in, in our church uh, a couple of weeks ago, the, the pastor mentioned that, and, and they had crews going out on the weekends, and they mentioned one particular home where they went in, and people weren't asking for help, but they were going finding out who needed it. And right. They had a crew go in on a weekend and and rip out and gut this house that had just been affected by Matthew two years ago. Mm -hmm. Two years ago, when they did this, it took them like three weeks. They went in with a crew and they did it in like three hours, four hours, yeah. and just did it because they had all that help. And just an outpouring of support from the community it really does make a difference. I know, and, and North Carolina just has a history of responding to disasters in this way, and we're seeing it play out again with Hurricane Florence and recovery, and it's uh, it's a really good thing to see, and it's, it's what's necessary. Absolutely. It's how you get over. Yes. And most people just want you to listen to their story, even when they're getting help. They want you to feel sympathetic or they want to feel the empathy that you have you know, especially when you haven't had it. I have been not in the hurricane, but I have lost all my items. So I, I can sympathize with them. I do understand trying to start all over. I do understand that process. So, you know, listening to everybody and guiding them, you know, cause they see the shirt, they're like, hey, FEMA. You know, I'm like, well, I'm not FEMA, but I can assist you with what you need. So we don't go into the necessity what FEMA does. We just send them back to the recovery center, give them the 800 number and have them call because we do work hand in hand together. Yes, we do. You know, we just want to make sure they get what they need yeah. to get assistance. You know, uh, talk, hearing you, you talk about that reminds me of um, a visit I made to a disaster recovery center and, and a man and his wife were there and they looked so despondent because they had been there before and there they were again and they felt like they were getting the runaround and I mean everything about them just their, their spirits seemed to be low and that one woman, um, the staff member at the DRC, who was who would be their caseworker, you know, walked them through the process, and then just began to like speak into their lives and their spirits yes. about, you know, look, you know, you these things that you lost, you can replace. And they said, look at you and your wife. He says, you're you're strong. You can get through this. And you, she says, I hope you leave with some optimism that FEMA is going to do what it can to make things right. And when they stood up, they looked like different people. Right. And so. So that's, I mean, that wasn't something that that FEMA worker had to do, but I find that, you know, the, the folks who, who work for FEMA, like, I mean, we just have big hearts. I mean, right. yes, it, it is a job. It's, it's part of a career for many of us, but um, so many to a person just has a, a, a very caring heart for helping people. And we've been through many disasters, so we know that there is hope on the other side if you go through the process. And it's hard, it's hard to tell people to go through that when they're in the midst 
of such a huge struggle. Right. But that's but that's what we're here to do. And, and even now, we think so. It's been five. How many weeks has it been since? It's been about March? five. Five weeks. Mm -hmm. So, a any idea of the numbers that you saw when you set up versus now, and and how that's looking? I mean, it sure it ebbs and flows, but uh, yeah, I. I um, don't really get into registration numbers ex except to say, you know, um, hundreds of thousands. Um, but I don't get specific about it. I just really like to concentrate on the number of people who have actually, you know, sure. received help and not just got approved for money, but actually have the financial grants to begin sure. to build back their lives. But I guess the, the, the point, too, would be, and, and it's why we're here five plus weeks later, is there is still an opportunity to get help. Right. Just because you didn't go doesn't mean you can't, shouldn't, or, or um, you know, you, you should you still go. Right. You should absolutely. still take right. the, uh, like go said, down there and five, check. We're five weeks in, and other people have already gotten to the other side of this right. disaster. And, it's, and you think, well, by now, hasn't everybody registered? But no, the, the it's, truth it's a, is a lot. They, they haven't, and we just want to encourage folks to do that. Right, and we're coming up on our deadline November 13th for the uh, physical damage. So we encourage everybody to start with FEMA and register and then come apply so that you don't miss out on getting the help you need. Um, to close of business day, I do have some numbers. Um, that was yesterday, which was my birthday. <laughs> Happy birthday. I know, right? <laughs> okay, so with FEMA, the registration that was referred to us was 95127 and we approved over $219 million worth of loans for that as of yesterday. So we do have those, and they are for homeowners, businesses, as well as nonprofit organizations. Yes. So I do have the totals for it as and, of yesterday. And the expectation is that, you know, these numbers will continue to grow as yes. more and more people become aware and take advantage of the resources that are there. Uh, we are here for the long haul. People were wondering if, if Hurricane Michael that came through Florida would uh, impede the progress that they were making with FEMA, but we're not no. going anywhere. We will be here as long as the state wants us here. Sure. Um, moving forward, our, our biggest challenge though will be housing because in some areas there's just not enough in inventory, but they're all different kinds of programs and initiatives that the state and FEMA are working on together um, so that folks who need housing can have it. And if that means um, uh, folks having travel trailers or mobile home units, there's a program for that. Everyone isn't eligible, but if they find in a community and a county that there just isn't enough housing, then they make that available. And we talked earlier about the transitional sheltering, which uh, would be families staying in hotels. Uh, while they work out a more long-term plan, you know, that's in play as well. And also, there's a program to do just rapid repairs, like, like an army of, of uh, construction crews will come in and work in the kitchen and work in, in the bathroom and make sure the wiring is there, that um, drywall is there. It may not be the, the prettiest picture of a home, but it's functional, and folks can live in it safely and securely while they're working on something long-term or while they're working to fix their house up. But housing is definitely going to be a challenge for FEMA. And, and that's a regional approach, I think we were talking about before we started here. So that's not something that we would get one or two trailers for. That's something where you come into a region and assess the needs. Absolutely. As you were saying, Robeson, perhaps. Robeson uh, County. Robeson County. Yeah, they're, they're, they're one of 10 counties um, that have been approved to bring this program to the, the residents, the, the survivors. And, and Cumberland County isn't one of them, but I can't say that it won't happen right. because assessments and evaluations are being done out in the field all of the time. If, if a county hasn't been designated, it's because the assessment shows right now that there is enough inventory for rentals and, and other ways of getting housing. One last thing I was going to ask you before we, we wrap up here is from an appeals perspective, we talked, or, or you mentioned to Essie before about what was um, submitted for and what was approved. And so somewhere in there, there's a delta. There's people that yes. don't get what they ask for. So, and I've heard this from different people, different places on Facebook. I see other people that are going through the process. So if you get denied, do you just stop? Where do you come back and how does that work? Well, with the Small Business Administration, of course, we don't, when you get denied, is a letter. We tell you exactly what you need because it could be some information that's missing. You know, you don't just get denied because we don't want to help you. It's something that's missing. So we tell you to call that number, tell them, you know, read the letter. It's 
so important to read. And that's famous, so I'm gonna let her take over with, right. the, with yeah. the background. <laughs> yeah. it's, it's called a determination letter. Some people say it's a denial letter, but it's, right. it's a determination letter. And a lot of times the determination is that we need more information from right. you. The paperwork just wasn't right. So what we ask if you, um, when you receive a determination letter and it says that you were denied, we want you to read the letter carefully, like all the way through. And if you have trouble understanding what the letter says, if it's confusing to you, then call or go to a recovery center and there'll be someone there who can tell you exactly the reason why you were denied. So we want you to read it carefully because it could mean that there's just a paperwork issue that you can go home, take a picture of a document and bring it back and then refile. And there's another um, thing that I want to emphasize is that uh, you should contact FEMA for help with filing an appeal or any questions. I mean, those folks are there and they are there to help you answer any questions that you have. And you can go to a disaster recovery center or you can call the toll-free number 800-621-FEMA, 800-621-3362. Or uh, another part of that is knowing the third, the next graphic will say that you file a written appeal and the folks, uh, the staff, the specialists at the FEMA um, disaster recovery centers can walk you through that process. They can help you file, they can help you write the appeal. They can't sign it right. for you, <laughs> but they can do everything but, but sign it yes. as they talk you through uh, what's going on. Um, you, you provide the supporting information and documents that they need, including your registration number. You sign the letter, you can mail it or fax within 60 days of the, the letter that you received. And then I was in a, in a church forum uh, just this past Saturday and someone said, you know, oh my God, I got a denial letter. I, I'm just gonna throw it away. I can't believe FEMA did this. And then someone else came back and said, well, the same thing happened to me and I filed an appeal and I got and I got what the financial assistance that I needed from FEMA. So again, it's part of the process, but definitely uh, Kevin, like you said, don't let that stop you. It doesn't right. mean it's over, you know, that's it. You know, FEMA can't help you. It means that something wasn't quite right in the application. Let's look at it again and then refile it, make, do an appeal. And that's how it works. That's how the process works. Right. It's, it's basically the same with us. Thank we have the same thing. You get the letter, you have 60 days, and we walk you through it. We help you with everything, and then you come back. And then if we can't help you, we send you back to FEMA. Just like she said, there's a lot of different programs out right. there that That's can right. assist. Right, and so, yeah, so if uh, if the SBA, if you, if you didn't get the SBA loan, um, for whatever reason, we have what we call other needs assistance. Right. So there, there are other programs in effect, in, in, in action, uh, that we can plug people into, but um, we, we're all in it together. So you, yes. you work with us, we work with you, and, um, and we try to make things right. All right. So that's okay. why we tell them, it'll stop. So if you don't apply for the loan, we, like, we think you're good. You know, so that's what we're inferring by right. your actions. Yes. Or inaction. Right. Inaction. Yes. yes. <laughs> so if they stop, I mean, we, we stop. You know, then they're like, oh, they denied us. No, we didn't deny you. You didn't finish the process. We, we sent you some information, send it back. We'll walk you through it, like she said, and then we'll get back on the track sure. to try to help you. Yeah, and, and survivors should not sit in frustration because there are different ways to reach out to FEMA for help. If you can't, for whatever reason, transportation or mobility, whatever an issue is, and you, you can't actually get to a center, which is the the method I recommend, you know, you can call um, the the support line or you can go online and all of that information is spelled out. It's not confusing. You can just click your way through it. Right. But um, the important thing is don't sit in frustration. Ask for help. Sure. So my takeaway from all of this, because there's a lot of information in a short amount of time, would be two things. Mm -hmm. If you don't go, you won't know. That is correct. So yeah. go to a right, DRC the or call center, yes. or go to a recovery center or call or go online and mm -hmm. check out the options for FEMA. And, and the second one I think that we talked about towards the end is if at first you don't succeed, then try, try again. again. Yes. So if you do get denied, then go. But you're not going to know unless you go. And if you do get denied, try again because you all are here to help. Yes. And that's exactly, exactly why you're down here. And I think it's important to note, too, that you all talked about from a specialist perspective that, that you're here. And as we were talking about before the show, from Georgia and, and from D.C., you and all of the folks that came to support you come from other places 
They've been through this before. They know what they're doing. They are here to help. Uh, and they've experienced this many, many other times in many other places. And so they're experts at what they do. Uh, and, and I think people might not think about that. Yeah. It's not folks that are here local that are doing this for perhaps the first time. The folks in disaster recovery centers actually uh, have done this for a living, do this for, yes. for, uh, for a lot of people in a lot yeah. of places. And, and so that's why, Kevin, I kept uh, stressing that um, the staff, the specialists, are tested and trained on how to get yeah. people on the other side of a, of a disaster. Um, patience and understanding have to rule the day on right. everybody's part yes. because it's a big disaster. It is going to take time. But the bottom line is that FEMA, the SBA, all of us who are in this network of uh, providing support, we want to make it right for the survivors. We want to make it right for people who have suffered so much. So um, give us a call. You know, find out what we offer um, because we're here to serve the folks. I mean, that's why we're here. Right. Yes. We want to help. Well, thank you very much for taking the time to join us today. And, and again, thank you to our audience for tuning in and learning about what they can do to help themselves uh, or to help their neighbors if, they, or if they're watching this show now to share this information with others. But uh, thank you again, Pam and Essie, for joining us today. We really thank appreciate you. the opportunity. Uh, and uh, we look forward to getting this out so we can share it with other people and let them know where to go for help. Thank you. Thank you again for joining us.